Today, I'm going to be taking you on one of the world's most incredible train journeys, from Oslo, the capital of Norway, to Bergen on the west coast. We'll be travelling through some brutal landscapes, as I show you what it's like to travel on this train through extreme snow conditions. From the onboard restaurant car and its cooked meal service, to the varied seating options, including first class and the exclusive private compartment. Join me as I travel to the gateway of the fjords on the world famous Birgensbanen. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here at Oslo and I'm going to be catching the Bergensbanen over to Bergen. This is one of Europe's most scenic railways, it's going to be an incredible wintry journey, let's go! Good morning from Oslo Central Station, here on this beautiful winter day. The station here has two entrances, with the classic Ustbana Hallen building next to the main entrance. Just outside the station, you can find a well-served tram stop, with these trams running even in these snowy conditions. But let's head inside the station and have a good look around. Inside, you are greeted with a modern design, this part of the station only opening in 1980, upon completion of the Oslo Tunnel Line. There are plenty of opportunities to shop and get something to eat at this station, with food outlets, restaurants, cafes and more. If what the station offers isn't good enough, then a shopping centre is attached to the building. And finally, you can head down to the old station building for a few more choices, in what is called the Östbanahallen. This is a beautifully preserved building, and until 40 years ago was the main station building here. As well as the tram stop out front, Oslo Central Station is also well connected with local and long distance buses, and of course has a stop on the city's metro. Tickets for all of these local transport options, as well as long distance trains, can be purchased from the very small Entour ticket office, but most people book online these days. Anyway, let's have a look at the departure board. My train is number 601, the 1203 service to Bergen, departing from platform 4. Let's head down the ramp and await its arrival. The vast majority of trains departing Oslo are operated by V, the national operator of Norway. This Stadler Flirt unit is used on regional services running out of the city. You'll also see frequent trains to Oslo Airport, operated by Flytoget. A number of trains from long distance private operators, such as Go Ahead Nordic, and a few daily trains to Stockholm in Sweden, operated by SJ, the national operator of Sweden. Finally, due to a lack of any alternative route, there are occasional freight trains crossing the city via this station which is definitely an impressive sight. Here comes my train from the sidings. It's a loco hauled train, with a Norwegian type EL18 electric locomotive at the front. Behind it is a rake of eight carriages. These EL18 locomotives were built back in the late 1990s by Adtrans. They are based on the Lok 2000 project, many of which operate in Switzerland, with a few locos exported to Norway, Finland and even Hong Kong. This train is operated by V, which is Norway's national operator. Norway opened its entire passenger rail operation to a competitive tender in 2020, with V winning the contract to operate services on the line to Bergen until 2029. My reserved seat is in Coach 4, a standard class carriage. I'll show you why I didn't upgrade to first class later on. Let's get out of the freezing temperatures and onto the warm cosy train. Standard class is in a 2 plus 2 layout, mostly in airline style seating. My seat is number 28, a forward facing window seat. Today's route will see us heading west along the entire length of the Bergensbanen, through Norway's mountains and fjords, and serving as a lifeline to many stations along the way. Journey time is scheduled to be 7 hours and 3 minutes, covering 483 kilometres, or about 300 miles. 
we leave a few minutes behind schedule at 12.06. Not bad considering the heavy snow. Westbound trains out of Oslo Central Station travel through the Oslo Tunnel, a 3.5 km long tunnel running beneath the city centre. We emerge in Skyen, a business district in the west of the city, and not long after pass through its station. Fifteen minutes after departure, we come in to serve our first station. This is Sandvika, just outside of Oslo. After that, we're back up to speed, with the locomotive kicking up a blizzard as it glides along the snow-covered tracks. The incredible scenery starts later, but first, let's have a look around the interior of this train. We'll start off with the seats. These are adorned in grey fabric, and feature lots of different words. Please tell me in the comments if you know what that's about. These seats are very well padded, and have some fantastic ergonomic support, making them one of my favourite seats ever. There's also a cushy head pillow, which can be adjusted up and down. All seats have adjustable armrests, and they are nicely padded too. The seat has a two-axis comfort control, making it very adjustable. Firstly, the backrest can be reclined using this lever beside the seat. Another can be found beneath the seat, and this controls the adjustable thigh support. Legroom is fantastic, with ample room to spread out even for longer journeys. There's also a folding footrest on the seat in front. Above this, a little net for storing smaller personal items. And of course, a large seatback table, which folds down like so. Next to the seat, there was a larger table, however this was not in use. As the seats can be rotated, this is intended for when they form a bay of four, like the two shown here. Back outside, the winter wonderland continues. Where I live, it's very rare to see any snow at all, so this journey was particularly special for me. This station is Hörnerfoss, the true beginning of the famous Bergensbahnen route, known for being one of Europe's most beautiful train journeys. It's well below freezing outside, but yet this train remains cosy and warm, a true testament to its insulation and heating capabilities. In fact, the steps to board the train are even heated, to prevent the build-up of ice dragged in by boarding passengers. Right, I think it's time to visit the onboard cafe car, from which we can enjoy the snowy landscape over a drink or some food. The train is highly loaded today, and it's fairly common for departures to sell out. I'm in coach 4, while the cafe is in coach 6, so there's a short walk to reach it. The cafe car features a few tables of four, as well as some bar stools. The other end of the carriage has a few solo seats too. My only complaint here has to be the poor alignment of seats to the windows. Though I did really like the high level windows, which brought in a lot more natural light. On sale here are various packaged snacks from popular brands. A few baked goods can be purchased and are displayed here. Hot drinks can be made yourself and then paid for at the counter. There are also proper meals on display, which are cooked by the staff and served at your table. Here's a quick look at the full menu. It's primarily in Norwegian, but English translations are provided underneath each item. I went for a large cup of tea, as well as a spinach, chilli and cottage cheese pizza. This was tasty, and of course there's no better view from a cafe than one that's always changing. This came to a price of 151 Norwegian kroner, which is definitely not cheap for what I got, but I made sure I enjoyed it without thinking about the price. Not long after the station of Flo, our train begins to ascend into the mountains.
This climb gets even steeper as we reach Ol, one of the many small villages that this train serves as a lifeline for. Snowy scenes like this are so beautiful, though I must admit, I was a bit worried about the window freezing over and leaving me without a good view. This station is Jailo, home to some of Norway's leading ski resorts, and also popular during summer months for its natural beauty. And it looks like lots of skiers are indeed joining the train here. We are now 794 metres above sea level, though our highest point and most spectacular part of the journey is still to come. Another train passes us here, and you can really see the conditions these powerful locos push through every day to reliably deliver a passenger service. From Yailo, we continue to climb towards Finse. At this point, the tracks are now completely covered by snow. Everything out of the window is pure white too, other than some sparsely distributed trees or overhead line equipment. We stop at numerous village stations in this area, such as Haugastöl, with an elevation of 988 metres above sea level. This part of the line runs along the Hardanga Vida, a mountain plateau covering much of Norway's south. It's one of the biggest in Europe, spanning 6,500 square kilometres. The Bergensbahnen is one of the few railways in the world that you must ride at least twice. Once in the winter, to see the heavy snowfall and completely white views such as today. And again in the summer, so you can enjoy the true colour and beauty of the mountainous landscapes and fjords. Around here, we enter what looks like a tunnel. Actually, this is a snow canopy, and it's used to shelter the railway from rockfalls or avalanches. There are many of these on this route, especially on the section from Yailo to Myrdal. Protecting this railway is vital to many communities, in particular Finse. This mountain village situated on a lake does not have any public roads, making the railway the only way to reach it. During summer, you can hike along a private road, but in winter, this is not feasible. This location should look familiar to Star Wars fans. Finse was used as the shooting location of Hoth in Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Hoth was a remote and icy planet, with temperatures reaching minus 60 degrees Celsius. Whilst I don't think it gets quite that cold, you can see why the filmmakers selected Finse to represent the planet. Finse is also the highest point on Norway's railway, at 1,222 metres above sea level. And what goes up must come down, so we begin a descent towards our destination of Bergen. Hallingscheid station is actually in one of these snow canopies, and serves a mostly uninhabited area that's good for hiking. And sure enough, it's the least used station on the line. Time to go and have a look around the rest of the train's varied carriages and useful facilities. There's actually a lot to show you, so let's get started. Carriage 5 features six private compartments, which can be booked out for a fixed fee. These are actually couchette carriages bought second-hand from Germany. There's plenty of space here, even for six people. If in a smaller group, then you could even lie down if you wanted to, though no bedding is provided. The other half of this carriage features storage for bikes and skis and a large luggage stack, which was very popular. Moving forward to carriage 3, we find the family carriage. This has a few spaces for pushchairs. You can also find an entire children's play area, taking up around a quarter of the carriage. Carriage 3 also has two spaces for wheelchairs and an accessible toilet. 
Finally, Carriage One features Plus, which is V's first class seating. It uses the same seats and still has a 2 plus 2 layout. The key difference is a slightly better cushion and enhanced legroom. Neither of these are particularly necessary in my opinion, as the standard seating is already so good. The centre of this carriage features a small lounge area and a self-service station for the complimentary tea and coffee that you get with a plus ticket. Each carriage has two toilets, one located at each end. These were in good condition throughout the trip. The soap was kept stocked up, and the water worked fine. The hand dryer was working, but I found it to be pretty weak. Back outside, we're arriving into Myrdal, where you can change for the only other route branching off from the Bergensbahnen. It's a shame that I didn't have time to check this out, as the branch line just so happens to be the Flonspanner, a line that is said by many to be the most scenic railway journey in the world. My camera's battery was beginning to get pretty low at this point, but thankfully all passengers get access to two power sockets. Two European style sockets can be found on both the front and rear of the seat supports. For some seats, they'll be located next to the cushion. Above your seat, you can find some coat hooks. And the very well hidden window blind. There are also individual reading lights up here. Above this, you'll find the overhead luggage racks. Luggage can also be stored in the luggage stacks at the end of the carriage. And something I found rather amusing was the presence of sick bags in the middle of the carriage. Not sure why they were here, so if you know, then please leave a comment. At this point, it was time to head back to the cafe, as I fancied another hot drink. You get 50% off all hot drinks if you reuse the cup, which is definitely something worth remembering. I got a hot chocolate for 18 Norwegian kroner, which is a very good price for on a train. By this point, the winter fog had subsided, allowing for a clear view of what is, in my opinion, the best part of the journey. Much of the route here is single track, meaning we often have to wait for oncoming trains. The scenery here is truly breathtaking, and some of the best I've seen in the world. This shot was taken in the Raoun Valley, which goes on for 25 kilometers. Our next station is Voss, another one of Norway's popular ski destinations. The station has recently seen the addition of a gondola to the top of the ski slopes, though a one-way ticket is nearly the price of what I paid for this seven-hour train journey. So, how much did this journey cost? Well, I booked this ticket as soon as it went on sale, around two months in advance. I paid just 289 Norwegian krona, which is incredibly cheap for a journey of this length, especially in such an expensive country. We've now finally arrived at Norway's fjords, and the scenery here is even better than before. And best of all, a colourful sunset can also be seen. After around seven hours, we're finally on the approach to Bergen Station. We arrive two minutes early at 19.04. Overall, I loved this journey. The trains are extremely comfortable and well-equipped, even when travelling in standard class, 
and I'm sure I don't even need to say how much I enjoyed the scenery. As always, let me know what you thought of Wies Bergensbahnen train in the comments, and to see the unique new way of running overnight trains in Norway, then click up here now.